This is a brand new Merida Silex gravel bike. And in today's video, I'll give you a quick review of what it's like to ride on my favorite trails. But first, let's go through the details and the main changes over the original that launched back in 2018. Now, some of you may be aware of this bike. It launched just a few weeks ago after winning or being ridden to success in the gravel world champs. But the thing is, it's not actually designed to be a gravel race bike. When you look at the geometry and all the key features, it's clearly a gravel adventure bike packing setup along similar lines to a BMC Urs or the 51 Assassin. But clearly it can be raced. It's a carbon frame, it's lightweight. So I'm really keen to find out where it fits in the gravel category and how it compares to other bikes I have ridden over the last couple of years. The main reason I'm saying it's not really a race bike is because of the geometry, particularly the head angle. This is 69.5 degrees, which is way slacker than the more typical 71 or 72 you find on something like the Canyon Grail or a Specialized Crux. And it's a number you might find on a short travel mountain bike. And it's 1.5 degrees slacker than the old bike, which is already quite slack. Thankfully, the head tube is much shorter than the original. That bike, when launched back in 2018, when gravel was fairly new, was very distinctive, shall we say, by virtue of having a very tall head tube and there were quite a few unkind comments about it. But the general idea, the principle was fairly sound to place the front of the bike in a higher position to make it more accessible and more capable when riding very steep mountain bike type trails. So not a head down super aero setup at all. But we now have a longer fork so the head tube can be shorter and it makes the whole bike, I think, and you let me know in the comments below, look a lot more pleasant to the eye. That longer fork also means the bike compatible with a suspension fork without ruining the geometry as well. And I can see a bike with a suspension fork and a dropper seat post for that really gnarly type of gravel that some people like to do with their bikes, really pushing the boundaries of what is possible on a drop bar bike. One of the big changes from the original launch back in 2018 is tire clearance. And we have come a long way in that regard. So we've gone from 38 on the old bike to 45 on this new bike. And the bikes come spec with a 45 mil wide tire as we have here, a Maxxis Rambler, which I've not ridden for a long, long time. There is loads of space around the tire and the rear stays and the fork I can see from here. So good for mud at the time of year here in the UK, but it's a shame they didn't go wider. 47 or 50 might have future-proofed the bike a bit better. And when the Specialized Diverge is a 47 and the Fairlight Sakan goes up to 50 plus, 45 does seem a bit of a limitation, but let me know your thoughts on that topic down below. Is 45 wide enough or should they have gone wider? Some other details worth pointing out. We have internal routing. So the brake hoses and the gear cables, because this bike's mechanical, go through the top cap into the frame. We have a normal two-piece handlebar and stem, so you can swap the handlebar and stem if you need for fit reasons or other personal preferences, but the cables and the hoses do go through that top headset bearing, which is a potential issue. And you see my video on the pros and cons of internal routing by watching the video linked up above and down below in the description. One benefit of the cables being routed inside a frame is we have lots of space here for fitting a small bar bag or a big handbar bag if you are going bike packing. Because in my experience, the cables here can get in the way when you do fit a big bag. So that is one upside. Up front, we also have lots of fork mounts for a cage or extra bottles. We've got mud guard mounts as well. And then if I flip the bike around, we have a really interesting detail down here. Something I've not seen on a gravel bike before. Firstly, we have bigger disc brake rotors than we normally get. 180 millimeters front and rear, which really shows the mountain bike influence on the bike. Normally on a road or gravel bike, we have 160 front and rear, or 160 front and 140 rear. Now the idea of bigger disc brake rotors is to give more power and more stopping ability. And on a mountain bike, that makes a lot of sense, but I'm not sure if it's really needed on a bike like this. I can't recall many moments on a gravel bike of wishing I had more braking power, more stopping force. But maybe you feel differently. Maybe your disc brake rotors have been holding you back. Let me know by leaving a comment down below. The second detail are these things here, which are heat sinks on the brake calipers front and rear. 
They're attached to the mount between the frame, the fork, and the disc brake caliper, and sit just shy of the carbon. Don't actually touch the carbon here. And the idea, well, you know how a heat sink works, draw heat away from that source to keep that component cooler. But how much difference this actually makes on a gravel bike at a slow speed I'm riding bikes at remains to be seen. But a cool little detail, something Merida have done on their bikes in the past, but whether it's needed here, I don't know. Again, let me know your thoughts on that. They do look kind of funky, but I guess testing, we'll find out whether they're actually worth it. Another detail, while the bike is this side facing you, is a threaded bottom bracket, so no press fit to wire out here. So a bike that really does tick a lot of boxes full of adventure, bike packing, mountain bike inspired gravel bike. Merida is of course a brand well known for offering good value for money. Right up there with Giant and offering a lot of equipment for your cash. The range includes carbon fiber and aluminum frame options and prices start from just over 1200 pounds, which is pretty accessible for this type of bike and definitely pushes it into that sort of commuting hybrid category as well. And goes right up to 9,000 pounds for the 10,000 model. This is a 7,000, so we have a carbon frame and a Shimano GRX 12-speed mechanical disc brake group set and some nice Eastern wheels, which I don't often see on a gravel bike and their own flared drop handlebar stem, carbon seat post, and their saddle. Okay, last check before I get changed and we go for a spin and give my first impressions. There will be a full review coming very soon, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. Is to wear it. So I've got my scales here, reset on a top tube, lift up, wait for the beep. 9.4 kilograms, I'll bring that to the camera so you can see that. That is pretty decent, I think, for a bike of this size, uh, frame, material, and specification. So, let's go see how it performs. Straight away, this bike feels unusual is a word coming from more road biased focused gravel bikes like the Grail and others in recent weeks this bike feels very odd we have quite a high front end short stem and a wide handlebar so the whole front of the bike is much higher and closer to you than you would expect on a kind of fast race gravel bike but when you point the bike downhill as I have been doing here in the Forest of Dean on some mountain bike trails it all makes sense that quirkiness and the fit just makes the bike descend so well that's like a head angle and the extra length in it just creates such a calmness and a real authority when you are pushing it through corners and down rocky steppy trails where most road focused gravel bikes can be a bit jittery but on this your weight is Kind of higher and further back behind the front wheel the front axle and it just gives you uh, much more scope to put the bike where you want it the bike can chuck the belt offline doesn't feel skittish or nervous just feels really at home and that's where the geometry of the bike and the the numbers the angles all make a lot of sense so for that adventurous riding where you might encounter some very rough trails which you might do on a long distance bikepacking trip like the Badger Divide I did in Scotland last year is one that comes to mind so it definitely takes a little while to get used to it if you're coming from a road bike or a racio gravel bike if you're coming from a mountain bike it might feel more familiar but after a few miles once you've done some quite uh, technical trails that quirkiness fades away and it just feels really good and you feel right at home on the bike Got some nice chunky tyres, these Maxxis Rambler tyres give good grip, running super low pressures, 20, 25 psi for my body weight today. Comfort's pretty good. I mean, the only time it feels a bit rough is when you are carrying a lot of speed down a fast technical trail with rock slabs and you sort of wish you had a bit of suspension. But that's when you really find the limits, not the limits so much, but really pushing the bike as far as you can because you can push it a lot further and harder and faster 
than a typical racy gravel bike. The gear shifting seems to work just fine, despite the internal routing. Trying a GRX 12 speed, of course, big range cassettes help me in the climbs. I've managed to get the climbs just fine, and the sub 10 kilo weight isn't holding me back, doesn't feel heavy on the climbs at all. Just feels a really good bike for exploring anything beyond smooth gravel into that sort of grey area where a mountain bike might be the better choice this bike really makes a lot of sense and it definitely reminds me of the BMC Urs and the 51 Assassin two are really laid back slack angled gravel bikes so I've done a bit of descending today and I've been using the brakes quite a bit and we've got 180 rotors front to rear remember I'm not really sure I can feel a bit more power, but I'm not sure it's like a nice and day difference to 160s that I normally run. But maybe on a longer sustained descent where you are dragging the brakes a lot more, that's where they make more sense, rather than a quite short descent today where it's a very short period of braking between the corners. So I'm not really sure I can feel the benefits of it today. And the heat sinks, I haven't got much heat to suck away from calipers today. Wouldn't say it's the smoothest bike I've ever ridden despite the 45 mil wide tyres. Quite a rough trail I'm riding on right now, so it's a little bit jarring. But one nice detail on this bike, well, two details, are the fact we have a normal stem and seat post. So you could, if you want to, fit a suspension stem and seat post and really max out the comfort on this bike with the wide tyres. And that'd be an awesome setup for some big distance, bike packing, adventure riding. I mean, who needs a mountain bike? We have a bike like this. So first impressions, which this first ride is, a more in-depth review will be in the pipeline in the next few weeks time. But very good. It does ride very well. If you want a bike that can take on more rugged, technical, demanding trails, definitely a bike for adventure, bike packing, just a really capable bike when you are anywhere far from a smooth gravel track. And the option to fit suspension stem, seat posts, whack on loads of bags and bottles, and really go wherever you want, does make it a very appealing option. As I mentioned earlier, full review coming soon. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. And if you want to see a review of that BMC Air, as I mentioned earlier, for comparison, watch the video on screen now. But that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.